the millennials can't afford houses because they keep buying avocado toast. No. The millennials can't afford houses because they keep buying Fisher brand isotemp digital hot plates. Also, interest rates are like really high. In part one of this video, I want to walk you through my lab, talk about all of the equipment that I use on a regular basis, and show you where to buy affordable refurbished equipment. Emphasis on affordable. In part two, I'm going to talk about stocking the laboratory with supplies so that you'll have everything you need to attempt amateur science and possibly unlock horrors humanity was never meant to see. Before we jump in, hello, my name is Lore and I make videos about plant tissue culture. Plant tissue culture is the process of cloning genetically identical plants. It is very cool, and from one small piece of plant tissue, you can create pretty much infinite plants. I also host a Discord server where we talk about tissue culture and people all over the world are doing it. So if you want to join us, the link will be in the description below. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is a view of my laboratory. I rent the space through a startup incubator. Before I had the space here, I was doing this from my house. So you can definitely build a laboratory in your house. I imagine that's what most people watching the video are intending to do. On a scale from lab in fiction to lab in reality, I find that the space is firmly grounded in reality. The largest piece of equipment and the first piece of equipment that I want to talk about today is the laminar flow hood. The flow hood creates a sterile working environment by blowing clean filtered air over your work surface, which then keeps the bacteria and the dust away from your cultures or other sensitive materials. I primarily use the flow hood when I'm putting explants into tissue culture, which is the beginning of the process. When I'm subculturing, which is the act of transferring plants from one container to a new container of fresh media, and also when I pour the media, which I demonstrated in a recent video. So I use it a lot. It's probably the most important piece of equipment that I have. If you are curious, the model that I've been currently using is the New Air Air Guard NU340. What a mouthful. If you were to purchase this new, it would be like $5,000. Do not Give New Air your $5,000. Please, God. Um, instead, let me put you on to public surplus. <laughs> Big public institutions like universities are constantly buying new lab equipment, which is fantastic news for us trash goblins because that means they're selling the old equipment at a very steep discount. They sell all sorts of other stuff too, but today we're focusing on the lab equipment. Gov Deals is another website that's very similar to public surplus. There are also private lab surplus companies as well. The Lab World Group, Surplus Solutions, and Lab X were just a few that I found when I was researching for this video, but there are obviously others as well. If you do purchase a flow hood secondhand, I would make a point to ask when the filter was last replaced because HEPA filters can be quite expensive. And if you're especially handy, I do know a couple of the people in the Plants and Jars Discord server have built their own flow hoods. So if you're interested in doing that, I'll link a tutorial below that a lot of people have used and had success with. The next two pieces of equipment that I regularly use for plant tissue culture are the orbital shaker and the magnetic stirrer. The Fisher Isotemp magnetic stirrer slash hot plate I did buy brand new. Boo! I'll pipe in like some boo sounds. I think it was around $900 and I bought it kind of when I was first getting started and didn't know better. I mainly use the magnetic stirrer for mixing tissue culture media, which is the gel that the plants multiply in. The magnetic stirrer uses a spinning magnet underneath the plate to make a small stir bar inside the liquid spin around, essentially mixing everything together. It's kind of like having a tiny motor inside the liquid that keeps it stirring so that you don't have to do it manually bog witch cauldron style. <laughs> the reason that this particular magnetic stirrer is so expensive is because it also has a hot plate component as well. I seldom, if ever, use the hot plate. I basically never use it. It's useless to me. Sometimes I'll turn it on to prevent my media from congealing into a gel too quickly after autoclaving it before I can pour it, but that is the only time I ever use it. 
I wouldn't even recommend purchasing one of these refurbished. I would instead just march on over to Amazon and purchase a cheap one there. I have two of them that I recommend. I've used both of these before and they're both pretty inexpensive. Um, and then to really pimp out your magnetic stirrer, I would recommend getting some extra stir bars. The magnetic stirrer will come with one, but you're gonna want more than one. The orbital shaker is what I use to sterilize explants, which are the pieces of plant tissue you start with for the tissue culture process. Everything in tissue culture needs to be completely sterile and very clean. So in order to get those plants clean enough to go into tissue culture, I usually rinse them in some bleach water on the orbital shaker. This was the most recent purchase that I made for my laboratory. I didn't have one of these for a while. I kind of was using my magnetic stirrer in place of the orbital shaker for a long time. You can use the magnetic stirrer to clean explants. The only drawback is that sometimes that stir bar starts to beat the crap out of your explant, especially if it's a very delicate piece of tissue, like a leaf, for example. Ooh. 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 The next piece of equipment that you need for tissue culture is a tool to sterilize your forceps and your scalpel or scissors in between handling different cultures so that you don't cross-contaminate them. This particular tool is called a Bacti Zapper. This was also purchased new for the low, low cost of $461.03. <laughs> There is a warning on this product that warns you against using it for anything except for sterilizing inoculation loops, which is clearly not what I'm using it for. So I don't know if I can wholeheartedly recommend this purchase with my whole chest. Instead, actually, I would recommend picking up a glass bead sterilizer. The principle is essentially the same. The glass beads are hot and the heat kills bacteria and spores. So that is what I would recommend over the Bacti Zapper. And I will probably pick one of those up too at some point in the next year. If you can't find a nice glass bead sterilizer secondhand, you can also get cheap ones from Amazon. These ones, I believe, are primarily used by like nail technicians, I think. And although they don't heat up as hot as a lab grade glass bead sterilizer would, I've still found it effective for doing plant tissue culture. There is a cursed third alternative to either a Bacti Zapper or a glass bead sterilizer, and that is an alcohol lamp. The alcohol lamp is very chaotic because in order to use it properly, you need to have an open container of 91% alcohol sitting right next to it. And you're taking your forceps from the alcohol and putting them over the flame. This is dangerous for obvious reasons. And one time I accidentally put my flaming forceps back into the container of alcohol and started an alcohol fire. The final big piece of equipment that I want to talk about is the autoclave. Imagine being a transformer, but instead of turning into a Lamborghini, you turn into this. Now back to me. Funny or no? Um, no, it's great. Do you want to see inside? An autoclave is a machine that uses high pressure steam to sterilize equipment, tools, and materials by killing bacteria, viruses, fungi, and spores. Autoclaves are also very expensive, especially a big one. When I had my home laboratory, I would use a pressure cooker in place of an autoclave. Both a laboratory autoclave and a pressure cooker work by using pressurized steam to reach high temperatures, allowing them to sterilize materials so they can be used essentially interchangeably. The pressure cooker that I recommend purely because of its large size is the Presto 23 quart pressure canner. If you don't have the ability to use a pressure cooker at home, you can also use an Instapot. Naysayers will say you cannot use the Instapot for sterilization because it doesn't hold 15 PSI very well. I know multiple people who use it very effectively, so yes, you can definitely use an Instapot to sterilize things. Before I get into all of the tools and stocking the laboratory, I wanted to just say my lights that I use for tissue culture are the Nurser 3 Grow Lights from Horty Power. That's just something that I get as a question a decent amount. Next, I want to talk about stocking the laboratory. It is hard to do this part without it turning into a full-blown QVC episode. 
So I think I'm going to turn my set into like a QVC set. BRB. Um, do people still know what QVC is? Does this make sense to people? Sound off in the comments below. The tools that I use for handling tissue culture plants are just some stainless steel forceps that I purchased from Amazon. I like the ones with the pointier nose just because I find it's easier to handle very small pieces of plant tissue. For things like dividing callus, I use stainless steel scissors. Um, a lot of people would probably prefer to use a scalpel. Um, I don't because I'm afraid of scalpels. If you know, you know. And then the last thing that I use for like touching the plants is just these stainless steel trays. These I believe are for Tattoo Studios technically, but they also work for plant tissue culture. The forceps, scissors, and trays can all be autoclaved, and to do that, I feel like I need a second QVC lady here with me to like pass stuff to. Um, but to do that, I put them inside of these sterilization pouches. I have two sizes here. The smaller ones I use for the forceps and scissors, and the larger ones get used for the trays. These pouches just keep everything sterile until I'm actually ready to use them. That way I'm able to sterilize a whole bunch of forceps and scissors and trays at once so I have them ready to go when I need them. Another tool that you need to do tissue culture is a pH meter. The media typically needs to be around a pH of 5.7. And to do that, I use a pH probe like this one. This one is an Opera pH probe, and while I do like it, I do think it is pretty overpriced. I want to say this thing costs like $100, which is crazy. There's a bunch of different brands. I've used the Blue Lab, I've used generic ones. I do prefer the Opera. I think it holds the calibration better than other probes that I have used. For measuring, you will also need a set of micro pipettes or pipitores. People get mad about me saying pipitore regardless of how I pronounce it. So I have blacklisted that word from my YouTube comments. And if you want to ask me a question about these, you will just have to vaguely describe their function. The micro pipette, as I mentioned before, is used to accurately measure and dispense very small amounts of liquid. I primarily use the micro pipettes for dispensing plant growth regulators because typically you're only picking up a few milliliters at a time, if that. And then to release the tip, you just press this bottom button. Whoa came right back to me. For larger quantities of liquid, I will usually measure them in graduated cylinders. So this one is up to 1000 milliliters, which is equal to one liter. And then I have some smaller ones that go up to 100 milliliters. And between these two sizes, this pretty much gets me everywhere I need to go, at least for plant tissue culture purposes. For measuring powdered chemicals, I use a digital scale. The one that I purchased was very, very expensive. It was a mistake I made early on when I was first getting started with tissue culture. I don't know why I thought I needed to spend $300 on a scale. Instead of buying the one that I use, I would recommend just picking up one of these much cheaper digital scales for around $10 to get started and then upgrade it later if you feel like you want to. As long as the scale can read hundredths of a gram, you'll be all set. So that's two decimal places after the zero. Those were all the measuring tools that I typically use. To make tissue culture media, I will usually mix it in a three liter plastic container. The plastic is not an issue because as I mentioned before, I don't turn on the hot plate while I'm mixing media, so it's not melting or anything like that. When it's time to autoclave the media, I will pour it into a media bottle like so. I'm not sure how this will do with the green screen, but I'm holding a media bottle. Um, I have a bunch of different sizes of media bottles, but the ones that I use most frequently are the two liters, the one liter, and 250 milliliter sizes. The brand for media bottles that I prefer is Pyrex. I have used generic glass media bottles before, but I have had them break in the autoclave also, which is really a huge pain in the butt. So 
I would recommend the Pyrex brand, although they are a little bit more expensive. In terms of the media ingredients themselves, it is going to totally depend on the type of plant that you're working with. I mainly work with tropical ornamentals, so I will typically use Mirashigi and Scooge as my basil salt medium. If you were working with woody plants, you would likely use WPM, which is woody plant media, just a different basil salt medium. Again, it totally depends on the type of plant you're working with. So I'm not gonna go through all of the different media ingredients because you really don't wanna buy more than what you need. If you're not sure what you need, I would recommend looking for a protocol for the specific type of plant that you wanna work with and then buy what you need for that specific protocol. The PGRs that I use most frequently are BAP, IBA, and NAA. That's pretty much all I use for tropical plants. Before I wanna talk about the sponsor, I just wanna say I realize that like a lot of the stuff in this video is very, very expensive. Even if you're buying equipment secondhand and refurbished from public surplus or eBay, it's still going to be expensive. So I am working on a video that complements this one where I do a very cheap home setup essentially a remade updated version of my tissue culture for under $200 video. So if you're like, this is prohibitively expensive, please don't despair. I'm making more affordable content. Bye.